Hello, my friends. It is the last week of February in northern Indiana, zone 5B, 6A. And I want to show you the or one ideal setup for starting seeds, okay? And I want to tell you a couple of the mistakes that most people make. And this is very important, all right? Everybody wants to start seeds for the upcoming growing season, which is wonderful and you should be doing it, but they don't have the proper setup. They're unwilling to make the investment, even a small investment, will have tremendous results, okay? So just getting the seeds and planting them in the soil and putting it in a windowsill is not gonna do what you want it to do, all right? You're not gonna get the, the nice, big, vibrant, healthy plants that people think that they will. And so they're, they're like, hey, what's happening to my plants? Because they're all stringy and leggy. When you see your plants growing real long stems with just a couple small leaves at the end, they're searching for light, okay? They're searching for light, they're probably too moist, and they're just not liking the environment. So starting up those plants, and they're all weak and stunted, putting them outside then, they're just never gonna recover. I mean, they'll do something, they'll grow and they'll produce something, but they're never gonna be that strong, vibrant, healthy plant that we're after, that's gonna produce food and sustenance for us, okay? So by following a few of these tips and guidelines, uh, you will be a master at it in no time, all right? Like immediately. So first thing is light, okay? Contrary to popular belief, the only food for plants is sunlight in the form of the sun or in the form of uh, uh, lights. So contrary to popular belief also, you do not need a specific grow spectrum, a specific grow light, all right? You see a lot of these... Um, on on Pinterest or on the internet or something and people seed starting uh, setups and they have those yellow or I mean a uh, purple hued lights and you're like oh what is that do I need that the red lights or the purple lights no you don't you don't need that okay it's kind of gimmicky all right and I've done it all I've tried it all I mean I've done it on commercial scales and everything so uh, the 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 red type LED red purple LEDs are pretty much a gimmick and unnecessary. I mean, they work, but you don't need them, all right? So don't think that you have to go and spend a boatload of money on a specialized grow light, okay? It used to be that you had to have this kind of light, a, a T5 fluorescent bulb. This is the kind, you know, lights up, and, it, and it's, got that, uh, it's got that really, really kind of blue light. This is old school, all right? It still works, of course, but it's not necessary, and it's expensive compared to They've come so far with LED lights and stuff that now you can just use a shop light from Menards, okay? The only thing you need to make sure of is that it's the right K. K is the spectrum of the light, okay? Uh, so, for example, this one is 6500K, which is a really blue, like, daylight, uh, you know, it's that classic aquarium kind of look. Whereas 4K is a little bit more to the warm side, meaning to the orange side, okay? A little bit more. But still, 4K is perfectly adequate for starting seeds and vegetative growing in general. If you wanted to grow cilantro in the basement, like I have been doing, or green onions, this is totally adequate. The only time you need an actual grow light is when you are trying to produce fruits or flowers in, in, uh, under the light. Okay, but for just seed starting and vegetative growth, this is ideal. So get you one that is at least 4K or higher, 4, 5, 6500K is the top of the spectrum, uh, and go for as many lumens as possible. The lumens is the power, the, the amount of light units per given uh, uh, square area. Okay, so you want the highest lumens possible. Some of them will just be like 3,000 or 4,000 lumens. Those are okay, those will work but they're a bit more dim, it, you know. But a 12,000 lumen one, that is like a, whoa, it's the sun, you know, really nice and bright. This thing, 20 bucks, 19.99 from Menards, okay? So unlike the grow light that was 59 or 79.99, that didn't have nearly the, the lumens, the power. I, I mean, it, you would have had to get three of those to equal something like this. So it's, it's, uh, it's advertising and gimmicks. So just cut through all that in the Viking way, yes? Cut through all of that and go right to the goods, right to the point, right to what you need and forget about what you don't need. So we got our light, okay? 
you have to have lights for the indoor setup. I can't stress it enough. You will not get the results that you want without them, okay? So make the investment. Uh, one or, or two of them is best, all right? The next thing is you're gonna wanna make sure that the temperature is right. This is also where people fail a lot because they will start up seeds in like their mudroom or something or like a, a, a windowsill or something or like in a spare room that is cold, okay? Especially this time of year. And so they'll have this wet, soggy soil that's cold and damp with, with minimal light and the plants just don't thrive. And that's most people. When you look, when you look at their setups, if you're like on Facebook gardening groups and stuff, and you look at their setups, you're like, ah, oh, yeah, man, those are some ill-looking plants. But you can't say anything, you know, because they gotta experiment themselves. They gotta find out, and they haven't watched this video. So, uh, so heat. Now, you can have a warm room if you keep your house in the mid 70s. Then that would be fine. That that's adequate. But if you're like me, I keep the house at 55 at night and in mid 60s, low 60s during the day. Okay, so that's, plants are not gonna like that to start up. Seeds need warmth. They want that nice, warm uh, soil that's like a, mm, you know, like a little warm bed for them. That's what they like. Seeds can be really delicate. I mean, they will start in colder soil, but they love to start in nice, warm soil with vibrant amount of light. All right. Now for that, I strongly recommend just do it. Get yourself a heat mat. And I'm going to put links to all this stuff that I'm showing you uh, or suitable uh, suitable substitutes in the description. All right. So it, it'll be you click on it. It'll take you to Amazon. You can either get those exact ones that I choose or you can search around and get ones like it or whatever. But I'll put those links in the description so that you know you can find it yourself. But see here, this heat mat, now this is much bigger than most heat mats. I like this kind, this is the 48 inch kind. So you can fit four tomato trays on this one heat mat, which is very important for me. Instead of having a dozen different heat mats, or four different heat mats, you can just have this one. So this is going to warm up and provide bottom heat for the soil. So that's gonna provide the heat that you want it to, um, Help, help the seed sprout. Now, this is imperative. This is important. You must get with it a regulator. Don't get one that is just a seed mat and you just plug it into the wall. They will cook the plants. They'll cook the seeds. I mean, yeah, you'll have some success, of course, but you really, to get serious about it, you really want to buy the, the heat mat package, and I'll put a link that has the thermometer with it. The thermostat okay and I will show you how to use this uh, here in a minute but essentially we just plug the heat mat into the th um, thermostat and then the thermostat into the wall and then put the little uh, sensor probe into our uh, seed tray which I'll show you okay and then we hang our lights now you want the lights at first about as close as possible I mean it's hard to mimic the Sun the intensity of the Sun so you want them intense so I'm gonna put the lights here, or I'm gonna put the, the things down here, the, the trays of plants, and then it's gonna be real intense light, okay? So let me go grab the trays of, of uh, plants and we'll come right back. Okay guys, we got it all set up, and as you can see behind me, it's pretty bright. But that's what we need, that's what the plants want, is the brightness, okay? Between these two lights, we got 24,000 lumens happening, all right? But don't let those numbers bedazzle you or anything. It's not that confusing. Just know that the more lumens you can get, the better. Okay, so we got our lights, our heat mat, our thermostat, all of it set up. The plants are there. Now, make your life easier and get a timer, okay? This is going to really simplify things. So we're gonna, we're gonna set this for 16 hours of, of light and eight hours of no light. We're gonna plug this into the wall and then plug the lights into the timer. And that's going to make them come on for 16 hours and then off for eight hours. This is very important to use, okay? Because the, the plants are sensitive to minutes, to the changing of day length, especially onions, by minutes, okay? So don't just think you're gonna, I'll just turn it on before work and then shut it off sometime when I get home. No, don't, don't take that risk, okay? This will provide you much better uh, quality plants.
and it's like nine bucks. So make the investment, all you need. Now, I'm gonna run you through this setup real quick so that you can have a look. Okay, going into the wall, we have a just a splitter like this. All right, I, I like it to be this way instead of plugging everything into the wall. It just feel like it's better. And plus, so we have that. Then we have the timer that is set for 16 hours of light, eight hours of darkness. And in the timer, we have plugged in the lights. And these are these lights are um, linkable. So you see at the end, I just plugged one into the other one. So that one timer can put both these lights on and off. Also in the uh, splitter, we have the thermom or the thermostat plugged in, all right? And then we have the heating mat plugged into the thermostat here. And we have the uh, sensor gauge, the sensor probe sunk deep into the soil medium, whatever growing medium of the, uh, in this case, onion tray. Okay, these are both onions. These are, I'm gonna do all four of these are gonna be onions. Uh, and then I have it set at 80 degrees and it stays pretty much within a degree of 80 degrees. Okay, so these seeds are getting constant 80 degrees day and night and 16 hours of sun, eight hours of darkness. Now, these are gonna sprout pretty soon with this awesome setup here. So uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know. If you need to scale it up bigger, uh, that's definitely doable. But make the investment, all right? It's going to be well worth it in terms of overall health of your plants.